Well, the weather is finally warming up, which means you might be heading out to the yard, doing some yard work around the house, kind of beautifying your home there. And if you're heading out to Flower Day in Eastern Market this weekend, you're going to want to listen up. Matthew Bertrand, he's the senior restoration coordinator with Friends of the Rouge, and he is joining us live this morning with some tips, not only to get your green thumbs going, but to make sure the plants you put in your home are actually good for the environment. Matthew, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. So well, you have some really important information to share, especially ahead of Flower Day at Eastern Market tomorrow. Thousands of people are going to be there. What should people be focused on when they're looking for plants and flowers to fill their, their gardens at home? Sure, there's a few major things people should focus on. One is to make sure that they're not buying invasive plants. There are actually some invasive plants that are harmful to our natural areas that people buy and plant in their yards. So we want to avoid that. And then we also want to try to pick more native plants for our yards. Uh, if you're someone that is interested in birds and butterflies and pollinators, the native plants are the right choice to make. Or if you're a diehard Michigander and you want your yard to feel a little bit more like Michigan, the native plants are also a great choice. And I've heard that sometimes invasive plants or invasive flowers, they're gorgeous. They might look beautiful, but maybe not do uh, so many beautiful things to the environment. So how do you know which ones to avoid? Is it as simple as asking uh, the vendor, hey, where does this grow? I'd recommend that everyone do an internet search for invasive ornamental plants and take a look at the list that comes up. Um, the Midwest Invasive Plant Network has a great guide about how to pick alternatives to a common invasive plants. And uh, I think that's the best way to go. The reality is many vendors don't yet know which plants are invasive. And so it's important to check on the internet. Uh, a very common one to watch out for is Japanese barberry. I would avoid buying that one. It's everywhere and it's one of our biggest upcoming problem plants. Now, you mentioned, Matthew, wildlife and, and why having native plants in your yard is good for wildlife. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Absolutely. Well, so if you want butterflies, if you want birds, it's helpful to think like these animals. So birds are looking for insects to feed their nestlings. 95% um, of the food that a baby bird eats are, are insects. And so how do we get these insects? Well, what do the insects want? They want plants that are from this area that they're used to. Think about monarch butterflies is a great example. We all know that their caterpillars are for milkweeds. A whole lot of insects are like that. And so if we want those insects, whether for themselves because they're gorgeous like butterflies, or if we want them to feed birds, we need to pick the plants that they're used to. And so native trees and shrubs, especially best way to go. Native oak trees are incredible. If everyone could plant an oak tree this year, that would be a glorious thing uh, for birds and butterflies in our community. And, and speaking of taking care of our plants, native plants typically, they need less water and maintenance. Why is that? Well, so there, many of them are, are very adapted to, to pretty harsh environments. So they're not uh, you know, plants that need a lot of um, babying and nurturing to survive. They're pretty hardy plants. And so if we're picking the right plant for the right place, then those plants are going to be relatively low maintenance. In the Midwest, and I know you mentioned uh, one plant to kind of be on the lookout for, are there certain invasive plants, invasive flowers that around this time in Metro Detroit tend to wreak havoc on, on local waterways like the Rouge, for example? Yeah, I'd say a plant that folks should really keep an eye out for that's already out there is garlic mustard. That's one that got brought over a hundred years ago by European settlers. It was a pot herb, people like to eat it. And now it's displacing trilliums and many of our other spring uh, wildflowers. And it's one that shows up in many people's backyards. It's super easy to spot, super easy to pull. And so it's one that folks can make a big difference on right in their own backyard. Really important tips, and I know a lot of our viewers are eager to head to Eastern Market tomorrow for Flower Day, so this is really helpful information prior to that. Thank you so much, Matthew Bertrand with Friends of the Rouge. We appreciate your time and all this insight. Thank you.